Welcome to our podcast on tropical storms. This is aimed to provide you with one way of revising for your upcoming Unit 2 exam. Remember, you also need to revise wildfires, earthquakes and volcanoes. We'll be going through a series of key questions and providing you with some of the information you need for your exam. You should also use your exercise book, textbooks, the geography site on the school website and past exam papers to get you properly prepared for this exam. What are tropical storms? Well, tropical storms are large, fierce and destructive swirling storms. Winds commonly exceed 118 kilometres per hour. However, the most powerful storms have been known to reach 300 kilometres per hour. Wow! They're called typhoons in the Pacific Ocean of Asia, hurricanes in North and Central America and cyclones in Southern Asia. How are tropical storms formed? Large weather systems build up where there are lots of moist, warm air. This usually happens in autumn after the long, hot summers common in tropical areas. At this time, the ocean surface is warmed to at least 26 degrees. High winds cause the rapid evaporation of seawater and the water vapour rises quickly to form clouds. The mixture of the heat and the water vapour often create violent thunderstorms. As they are pushed further across the ocean by the wind, they draw in more warm, moist air, gathering energy all the time. They start to spin in ever tighter circles, with their high speed being increased all the time by the Earth's rotation. What happens when the tropical storms hit the land? When the storm hits land, the energy of the storm causes large-scale disruption and destruction. As it passes over the land, the hurricane's energy is absorbed. The storm quickly declines in strength and eventually blows itself out. Is it just the winds that cause damage? Oh no! There are also storm surges which occur at the eye of the storm, the centre of the storm where there is very low pressure. They can lead to sea levels rising by up to 10 metres. A storm surge is a rapid rise in sea level caused by storms, especially tropical cyclones, forcing water into a narrowing sea area. The high seas can seriously flood low-lying coastal areas. And there have been examples of storm surges in the Bay of Bengal where over 300,000 people in India and Bangladesh have been killed and up to 2.5 million people being made homeless. Three hundred thousand people, that's a lot of people. Do more people die in LEDCs than MEDCs? Usually, yes. Poorer countries suffer most because their buildings, warning systems and emergency services may be inadequate. Wealthier countries can afford to prepare for such disasters and so minimise the potential destruction and loss of life. However, some of the hurricanes affecting MEDCs have been really bad. In your exam, you need to know clear examples of case studies, both for an LEDC and an MEDC. We'll now look at two case studies. Case study one, Hurricane Katrina, New Orleans, 2005. This is your MEDC example. On August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina made landfall in the Gulf of Mexico east of New Orleans. The storm's eye passed within 10 to 50 miles of the city centre. The effect on New Orleans, as well as on the entire coastal region, was devastating. In the aftermath of the storm, about 80% of the city, much of which is below sea level, was flooded. Estimated damages to property and infrastructure were in excess of $200 billion. The death toll has been estimated at more than 1,200. 
tens of thousands of citizens were evacuated to other parts of the nation. Many areas are still being rebuilt. Some people will never return as they fear another hurricane hitting the city. The New Orleans population has changed from approximately 450,000 to 350,000. Case study number two, Bangladesh cyclones. This is your LEDC example. Bangladesh is a low-lying country in southern Asia. It regularly suffers from floods and cyclones. On the 15th of November 2007, a severe cyclone struck Bangladesh, killing more than 3,500 people. Consider, spelled S-I-D-R, struck overnight, packing winds of 250 km per hour. The Category 4 cyclone triggered a 5 meter high tidal surge that devastated three coastal towns and forced 3.2 million people to evacuate their homes. The cyclone affected 8.9 million people. 1.5 million people had their homes damaged or destroyed. Crops and food sources were also destroyed. Community infrastructure was destroyed, roads, trees and more than 2,000 schools damaged by the destructive winds. Into this house we're born. Bangladesh is an LEDC. When a cyclone hits, the impacts are worse for many reasons. Firstly, people cannot afford to leave a danger zone to live elsewhere. Secondly, the government is unable to fund adequate disaster plans. Thirdly, poorly constructed buildings are unable to withstand the high winds. Fourth, megaphone warning systems that are used are often ineffective. Fifth, lack of emergency food and shortage of clean water cause further deaths by starvation and disease, particularly waterborne disease such as cholera. Finally, local rescue workers were poorly prepared and unable to reach stranded areas because of inadequate transport. can we prepare in the future? There are many ways in which we can prepare, such as Forecasting. When the development and movement of storms can be tracked, warnings can then be issued in places where they are likely to strike. Preparation. For example, many countries have education programmes in schools and villages. Cyclone shelters. In places where people cannot afford to protect themselves, the local authorities have built cyclone shelters, strong buildings often built on stilts. Various charities have been involved in schemes in Bangladesh. These have aimed to teach local people organisational skills for times of disaster and in some cases how to swim. Thank you for listening. Remember, if you're stuck on anything, ask your geography teacher for help. We're always happy to help you out. Our final tips are to remember to use case studies, include keywords, Pay attention to command words in the question. It's always a good idea to underline them. Good luck in your exam!